Okay, hey guys, it's Bonnie from Dwelling Logs. I've recorded this video a couple times and I've had some hiccups, so I'm hoping that this one will work. But I am trying to come here while I have some time and show you guys what I got in the mail. The last time I talked to you, I had said that there was something coming in the mail that we were adding to our school year this year that I was pretty excited about, and it's here, so I'd really love to show you what we are adding in, as well as a couple of other uh, math books that have come in the mail. So I'll show you guys them. I'll give you guys an inside look and chat. Just a quick talk about what I'd like to see in um, the start of our school year. We are taking a summer break right now. I meant to get this video out earlier, but our summer has just had some things interrupt. We've been doing some unexpected traveling, unexpected traveling, and um, things just haven't been going quite to schedule the way I thought that they would, which is fine. We will roll with the punches, but I'm here now, so I'd like to show you what's come. Um, if you've missed it, um, we had been sharing a, a vlog, a weekly vlog in the spring. We tried Charlotte Mason style um, learning for 12 weeks. And Charlotte Mason style learning too is like, it's not like one of those things that I think you just decide to do and like, there you go, now we're doing Charlotte Mason style. I think it's something that you learn to do. And so I think that we are still rookies, we're still in the learning process of it. And um, it was just, it's been a really fun journey though. I did not know how much Charlotte Mason crossed over with classical homeschooling. I have never been interested in classical homeschooling as a style or philosophy, and I am now really gravitating towards that. Um, I love a lot of different things from a lot of philosophies. I like a lot of unschooling. We do a lot of interest-led learning. I like to piece things together myself. Um, when I say that we're gonna go Charlotte Mason, we are not going to be buying a prepackaged Charlotte Mason curriculum um, to follow, um, like a box thing. But we are gonna piece together the things that we, and resources that we, we love and that we think go together. I did share with you guys my feast planner uh, this spring, and I will share the link below again now um, on this video. It is free, and it's a feast planner. It's basically how I, after learning from the last term of like piecing things together, I also like unit study approach, so to tie um, similar, um, just ties between subjects and themes together, I really like to do that. And the Feast Planner is just basically my way that I figured out more smoothly how to do it. So I figured if I could figure this out and, and find a good rhythm and way to work it out in a more smooth way, I would like to create a resource to share with others, which is what I did. So please enjoy the Feast Planner if this is interesting to you, especially if you're like me where you don't want a box curriculum but you kind of still want to kind of organize your thoughts and pull from different areas. Um, we want to shop our own library first and our own resources first. And I'm really, really excited for what the year is holding. So hang on because I'm going to show you what we are adding in this fall. We are adding in Latin. <laughs> I can't even hardly believe I'm saying it. I did not expect to be adding in Latin, but I really want to learn Latin. Um, partly because now we're getting into classic literature, I'm just inspired by the language itself. Um, also, I mean, I guess being a believer too, ecclesiastical Latin, um, you know, that if, if your kids ever want to go into any kind of ministry or Bible school and stuff, they might have a bit of a foundation at home might be nice, um, as well as as my kids are getting older and we're getting into uh, different scientific topics, um, Latin is used a lot. Uh, I have now two kiddos who have done quite a bit of hospital stuff and even just the lingo in the medical world. If you have some Latin roots, it's so useful in life. If your kids want to learn a second language that's Latin related, it's so useful. Um, so I want to show you guys inside this. I'll tell you what kind of Latin I chose. We chose um, the Latin for Children Primer A. Uh, it came with a few different books I can show you. I chose this because the small handful of friends that I know in real life to see them face to face who do Latin, none of them were super in love with the curriculum that they were using. So I really was depending on the online reviews that I was reading and I read blogs and stuff like that before I chose um, a Latin and so like a Latin curriculum and we're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna to have to put a pin in that and, and give you guys maybe a review once we're actually into it and tell you guys how it's going. I'd like to do some you know update videos through the year, but really hopefully once we're at the end of our year, I can give you a really good um, 
scope of what we think about the Latin for Children uh, curriculum. So I'm excited. We're going to do it as a family and it's going to be so fun. Um, the other things that came in the mail were our math books, our two new ones. Ugh. Math, dimensions, Singapore dimensions, math. Um, I'd love to chat more about math. I love talking about math. So I will give you guys a bit of a flip, fl flip through um, at the end um, inside of those. Um, but that is for, this one is for my oldest child. So my oldest is 11. He would be going into a grade six if you were doing grades. And then my youngest is five going on six. She's going into what would be grade one. And then um, my middle son, he is going into grade four and he's actually already like a third of the way through this book because he finished his last book early. He does a different um, math and I can talk more um, after uh, as I flip through them about why we do different maths for our kids and the different maths that we've tried. Um, I, I really like talking about math uh, because it's just, I just like where we're at and it's just been working really good. So I will share sort of my perspective and what we're using. Um, but as for the fall, uh, we also would like to get into some Aesop's Fables. I picked up this book at our library recently. It's just a Harvard's Classics um, Folklore and Fable, Aesop, Grimm, and Anderson. And um, I mean, I do have German heritage, so I do know uh, quite a bit of the Grimm stuff, but I really picked this book up for the Aesop's Fables. I don't feel like Grimm's fairy tales aren't something that I like promote to other people to be like, you should read them. They do have some moral teaching and whatnot, but they're on the scarier side, sometimes downright gross, and I don't know. I don't mind them all, but some of, the, some of them are good. It's like one of those things where you have to like wade through and find the good ones, but I do want to read more Aesop's Fables. We've been listening to Aesop's Fables on audiobook this summer, which I don't recommend because I want to do one fable, they're usually very short, I want to do a fable and I want to have discussion about it because there's so much teaching on moral and character um, and ethics with your kids and it's the, they're the kind of fable where you want to read it and you want to let it soak in. So I don't recommend reading them back to back and like a whole bunch at a time. I want, now that I've, we've listened to quite a few of them, I want to sit down and have like one a day or maybe three times a week we have uh, a fable or something and then we just have a really quick discussion about it maybe as we're eating breakfast or something like that, um, and then put it away. And so that is my plan. So I want to introduce that. This was recommended to me on, a, from a, not to me personally, but it was recommended on a, on a classical um, podcast, um, sort of for the kids who maybe might not be ready for Plutarch yet, even older ones. Like there's some older children, if, you, if you're not used to reading classical liter literature, this house isn't, although my kids are younger, um, then sometimes the like things like Plutarch might be really a lot to take in. Even for me, I'm 36 and it's like, it's a lot to take in and let it soak in um, and understand and chew on. I'm already, I already know I'm gonna be reading Plutarch again and again and again, probably until I die, which is fine because I'm actually falling in love with it. But um, I definitely um, really appreciated the advice to start with Aesop's Fables. Um, before you get into some of the more complex. They're short, but there's depth, and it teaches your kids, first of all, quality of writing, um, because it's so short, but there's so much jam-packed into it, and secondly, to look for character-building opportunities or moments um, and ethics in what you're reading. And so that is what I wanna teach my kids. I wanna teach my kids to look for that, and it might even turn into like some cool writing projects or something too. So anyway, so Aesop's Fables, that's definitely there. This summer, um, we went through the Beatrix Potter treasury. Uh, well, this is the treasury. We had like the little books from my library too. We've really liked that. On the same podcast, it was, it was um, recommended to maybe start with Beatrix Potter if you have little kids, um, like maybe under um, 10 or even, uh, well, Aesop's Fables, I think are great for, 10 or for under 10. Um, but maybe if you're, you know, maybe under six or under seven, uh, whatever, all my kids, even my even my 10 year old, um, oh, now 11, has really liked the Beatrix Potter this summer. Um, there's still a bit of moral in there, but they're fun and light uh, animal stories. Some of them are funny. The writing is simple, but good. And uh, we've really appreciated doing the Beatrix Potter stories this year, so or this summer. So I'm really glad to go through those, um, And but we should be done with them by the fall to start with our Aesop's Fables. So that is the plan for that. 
We will keep on doing Charlotte Mason grammar for grammar. Um, I would like to pick a theme to start off uh, the year with and I'll probably start with like a 10 week term so if this is something that you want to do uh, go ahead and download that feast planner I will be using that planner to kind of piece together which I haven't yet but piece together um, I think we're gonna do like dinosaurs and geology we have a lot of geology resources my kids are really gonna love dinosaurs if we do that as a theme plus it's harvest time um, for us at the farm which is a time that I really appreciate gather around homeschools resources because it's open and go it's still Charlotte Mason inspired but we've just used them for so long and we really like them especially for the times in our life where I don't have as much time to be creative or to put things together myself so um, I, we might get their dinosaur unit and, and plug that in kind of as our harvest time uh, school to go through and then round out the term with some of our own resources as well. So we have a rock polisher and we kind of did geology a few years ago or a couple years ago. I'd like to go in even at a deeper level. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. We'll still, like aside from our themes and our tie-ins, we will still be doing, um, you know, music, um, our, our poets, uh, I actually, I do have a poet picked out. I am waiting, I'm gonna be creating a resource for a mega bundle before the end of this month. So maybe I'll come and put the mega bundle link below. I think it's the last week of July. Don't quote me on that. If it's mega bundle time and you're watching this, there will be a link below. If not, there won't be, I guess. But I wanna to put together a poetry resource that we will actually be using for our first poet of the year. Um, so I'm excited. I want to spend at least a term with a poet. I, I have considered maybe spending a whole year with a poet. Charlotte Mason talks about that. We did Henry uh, Wadsworth Longfellow in the spring and I feel like it wasn't enough time with him. <laughs> so anyway, he will come up again. Uh, but there's another one that my husband actually would like us to do and I, I like his poetry too so we're gonna do that. So I will put a pin in it and I will let you guys know um, maybe when the mega bundle starts. Um, please, if you're also thinking like, man, there's no videos on here, what's going on? What's happening in their homeschool? Um, or if you're waiting for news, find me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram more than anywhere else and if I don't have a lot of time, that's just the easiest place for me to go, quick chat and stories or a post or whatever. So find me there. I'll put my Instagram link below too. Um, anyway, so that is my plan going forward. We're still gonna go Charlotte Mason. Definitely getting that classical flair in and I'm I'm just really pumped about it. So Yes, I think that is kind of where I'm at as far as the plans We have some novels and stuff that we want to add in and I'll probably have to give you guys more details as we get really close But it's sometimes it's really helpful to have these videos before we've arrived at beginning of school um, Just to get some ideas or juices flowing and stuff like that So hopefully this planner is really helpful for you guys and maybe you'll get some ideas from here, too let me show you inside this um, Latin curriculum and let me show you inside of our math and we'll chat a little bit about that before I leave today. I'm gonna try to switch my cameras. Okay, it worked. Um, all right, so Latin for children. Um, hopefully this is far away enough for you guys to see everything. So Latin for children, primer A. This came with uh, this workbook and then I also got the um, answer key, this is not a teacher's guide, it literally is just like filling in the blank for, for the blanks that are in the workbook, but the answer key is there. I often don't spend money on answer keys, especially when my in the lower levels of subjects, but I was like Latin, I'm probably gonna need an answer key. And then it also came with this activity book, and this is an optional add-on, but I did notice that in the recommended um, weekly routine for this book, it does refer to the activity book as well. And then there was this little um, story reader as well that came with it that was an optional add-on. So I did that. Um, I got all of the, the four and we will see how it goes. Let me show you inside of the workbook though. And um, I would say that this is, it looks very um, typical like workbook style. There's some fill in the blank. There's some, there's a lot of story. I do think I get the impression just from looking over and flipping through that this was probably uh, with a Charlotte Mason flair. Um, there's some picture studies in here and paintings and I don't know. It, it, I don't even know. Is it master books? It feels and looks like master books. No, I don't see. Oh no, it is classical academic press. So it's classical, but I feel like 
the other books I've gotten from Master Books have had a similar kind of layout and that kind of thing. Now what I have found is in here there are usually eight pages like per week that you would go through um, and then three pages from the activity book. So around 11 pages of work a week. Um, the activities are pretty fun. They're like crosswords and fun stuff. So for some kids this might be three extra pages that they have to work at. For some kids this will be like the reward for doing Latin for the day. So depending on your kiddos. Um, you know, 11 pages I feel like is a lot to, to invest into Latin every week, but hey, it might be awesome. Um, I'm hoping that we're, we're going to definitely try to follow the recommended weekly schedule and we'll just spread it out more days if we want to. So it's, it's our book. We get to do with it what, whatever we want. <laughs> it's not master of us. So it's recommended is day one, present the, the para, paradigm or grammar chant. Um, and I've, I've heard this term grammar chant a lot in when you're learning um, Latin and this is basically repeating and practicing the words and the vocabulary, vocabulary that you're learning. So don't think that it's like this weird chanting religious -y thing because that's not at all what it's talking about but just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so you're going to learn that, you're going to review it on day two um, and then it says that we're going to circle some sentences and do some coloring and exercises. And it says the students should also begin the activity book exercises um, to help with mastery. Day three, once again, do your paradigm chant. Um, a worksheet will be completed in here uh, and continue with the activity book. Day four, have students do your quick chanting of the paradigm and vocabulary. And next, do a puzzle in the activity book. So it looks like, like these three days, they're kind of encouraging you maybe to do one page in the activity book each day. And then day five, there's a quiz. So for example, let's go to lesson one. So here's lesson one. There's a memory page, a chapter story, fill in the blank for the meanings. Um, then there's a grammar lesson on these two pages. There's a painting. Um, and then there's a worksheet, derivatives. And then I think it's a quiz, and then a quiz after that. So I did look, the ones I flipped through, they were all eight pages each. So it's pretty consistent, the amount of work that you do. And I think that learning a second language, it is important to keep that um, momentum up. I don't want to spread this, these eight pages over two to three weeks because I think you need some momentum when you're learning another language. Um, that is my experience, my very little experience for the other languages that I've attempted. <laughs> I don't, I don't even want to admit that I, I speak anything else because it's all not very well done. Um, <laughs> speak a little French and a little German and that's it. Um, okay, so there's some pronunciation. Um, now I got classical pronunciation. So there's this part here goes over classical pronunciation and this part here goes over ecclesiastical pronunciation. Now. The difference basically, uh, from my understanding, is ecclesiastical is like basically the Latin of the church, the traditional language. If you go to Bible school or you become a minister or anything like that, the languages, the, the classes that you take in Latin are going to be ecclesiastical pronunciation. Um, it sounds very Italian. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's fine. Um, classical is what I've chosen that we will be learning. Um, for a couple of reasons I'll explain, but classical is more what you would find maybe in the secular world, if, like I talked about, um, if you were in the medical sy uh, system or world at all, or uh, scientific wise, they're gonna be using classical pronunciation. Now, I don't, I really don't think it matters which one you pick. I watched this excellent video, which I'll try to find again and link below, where uh, a fluent Latin speaker and he, a teacher, he's got his own book and stuff, talks about basically the, the clash and the, the, the classic versus the ecclesiastical. And really by the end of the video, re you realize that both are great. And starting with either one is fine. And if you start with ecclesiastical, it would be super easy to learn classical. And if you start with classical, it'd be easy to learn ecclesiastical. So because I chose classical because classical pronunciation is in more of a variety of things that we would commonly hear and could tie to things. Um, I thought that classical would be more useful 
with my kids um, as they grow up if they ever want to take ecclesiastical latin if they want to go into the ministry or something they should be able to easily adapt the language and learn the ecclesiastical um, but it, as far as like current life stuff we're not in a church that uses ecclesiastical latin so there was no like life application for the ecclesiastical pr pronunciation and so for that reason i went with classical but again it's like I don't think that there's a bad choice here, but it is something that when you're shopping for Latin, you'll see oftentimes that you have to kind of choose one. So this book specifically says classical or ecclesiastical pronunciation. So you could go ahead and have a uh, pronunciation for both in, in this particular curriculum. Um, and then, so I, yeah, I showed you guys inside the activity book. And then here we have this little guy and it's basically, um, where you you have like sentences and you have a glossary like this is all latin you have a glossary hey babe and then um some questions to respond okay sorry so then uh then there's some respond to questions and that kind of goes over and over again so i thought this was actually a story but it looks like maybe latin history reader it's a history reader Let's see, unfamiliar vocabulary list, written translation, oral translation, reading comprehension. So that's basically what it is, I guess. So I'm assuming that this is gonna tie in with the other books um, and, and, but this is like everything is in Latin. So this would be something that would be very cool to be like handing to your kids and have them being able to read and stuff. I will have to figure out how this works and let you guys know in a future time because I haven't used it yet, so I actually don't even know. Um, anyway, excited about that. Let's talk about math because I like talking about math. <laughs> okay, first of all, I'll put this here. Um, this is the uh, apology of math. Why am I doing something different for only one of my kids? Um, I've always started with Abeka. I really love Abeka maths from uh, K to about two or three. Um, for myself growing up, I grew up with a Becca. I started struggling at about grade four, not because I was bad at math. I really loved math. I usually thrived at math, but the questions were getting complex. And in the workbook, I was quite an independent student and the workbook didn't have enough teaching for, uh, for some of the more complex problems. And so, unless you're a family who wants to get the DVD set, or if you're a mom who has a whiteboard and you have the teacher's guide and you're teaching your kids um, as in a class classroom style, which is what Abeka was designed for, um, I I don't I don't love the use of it after about grade two or three, um, just because I think it needs extra teaching. Now, if you want to do the DVD set or you love the whiteboard and you loved it, the, doing the teaching part, that's very cool. Um, but I do love the independence and the simplisticness. Uh, simplisticness um, when you have ma a math book that just kind of has it all in in one book um, however I am I'm going to talk about a book that we are a math that we have two books in in a minute um, anyway so we have switched from all my kids have started with a Becca but then we have changed as we go this child my middle guy he is tactile he loves hands-on learning but he also loves color and interest um, he's a visual um, and so Abeka was great, but it wasn't hands-on enough. We went to Matthew C, which was very hands-on. I love Matthew C. Great impression of Matthew C and Matthew C graduates that I know. It's an amazing program. However, the workbook looks boring. It's a bunch of black and white squares and words. And he didn't love that. <laughs> it didn't excite him. And so uh, we weren't really having big math struggle struggles, but I want my kids to love math. And so I started looking for some more stuff. And at that year, Apologia had just been doing their, they just started writing their math curriculum for maybe a couple years. I attended an online conference where the writer, uh, the, this Catherine Gomez, um, was speaking. And I thought, I want to try your math because if you hear her speak, she is so excited about math. She, it just... You can tell she just lives for it. Like it's, she's happy and she's excited to do the games and she has her own kids. She was homeschooled herself. And um, I just loved her approach in like her personality. And it, I really think it comes through in her books. So this is 
the um, third year that we're going to be doing Apology of Math for my middle son, and it's just right. It's just enough color and fun on the pages. It's short lessons, so it's not exhaustive, um, but it's well done. It's got hands-on prompts with very easy um, manipulatives, like using building blocks and buttons and toothpicks and things, so you don't need to buy this expensive kit. If you have some building blocks at home, some Uno cards and some dice, you're probably good. <laughs> so I really, really appreciate that. And uh, there's enough games in it too that also are fun. That's a little bit more intensive for mummy, um, but oftentimes they're easy enough that I can hand it to my older son and I'll say, both of you guys can go play a math game. And then, it, you know, then my hands are freer like that. And it, they're so fun that my oldest son, he likes doing that as well. So anyway, that's just kind of a bit of an impression of Apologia. We really like it. Like I said, this is our third year. So why don't you reinvent the re wheel? This is working really well for my middle son. Um, that said, for my youngest one, who just finished uh, the Abeka K5, instead of going and buying the Abeka 1, because I do like their, their first grade math, I thought I would try... Uh, dimensions, Singapore dimensions math. Now, for my oldest son, he started this in grade three. He had done a Becca up until uh, grade two, and we w we needed something more challenging for math because he was quite good at math. And um, I knew that I wanted to switch from a Becca before grade four, anyways. And so I was looking for challenging maths, and I really liked this one. I liked how everyone said it was very challenging. Um, I'd say the first six months were very difficult. Uh, the switch, it really has the kids thinking in, in a different way. And there were even tears. And I've talked to so many families who love Singapore Dimensions math, and they say the same thing. The first six months were tears, and then it was just smooth sailing after that. And that's what we have found too. So um, if you try Dimensions math for the first time, make sure you give it a good chunk um, till you kind of find, get the rhythm of the book and your kids get used to being um, challenged. And what I mean by challenged is like they'll, they don't just teach you one way to solve a math problem. They'll take up one math problem and teach you four ways to solve the problem. And so your kid gets, uh, your child gets um, different avenues uh, of how to rework numbers. And it, in my opinion, it makes them quite strong math um, students because they just understand how fluid numbers are and how they work in different ways. And once you understand that, it really helps when you get to um, the older maths like pre-cal and stuff like that. So anyway, I really appreciated that. The workbooks aren't super exciting. They're all black and white, but they have cute little figures and stuff. Um, one of the things that drew me to this is was the textbook for these books, um, which almost has like a comic book vibe to it. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Now you'll notice I don't have a textbook in front of me. I have a workbook and I have a teacher's guide. Now, when you buy uh, the Dimension Singapore Math, they often sell it in a set with all three, but I found a bit of a hack to save me a few bucks. If you open up the teacher's guide, if you get the Dimensions Math Teacher's Guide, not homeschool guide, I've never bought that. That's a new product, I don't know what they're like. Um, they didn't sell them when I first switched to Singapore Dimensions. Um, but if you go to the teacher's guide, here is the textbook page in full color, exactly identical to what the textbook would be. It's readable, so I, when my son does a lesson, he'll read through this. And if he needs extra teaching, I'll read this part. There's often like extra games and different things. So if he's doing really well on a subject or on a, on a certain math concept, I won't even do all this. I'll just say, read your textbook pages in the teacher's guide and do the workbook. And that's it for me. However, if he's struggling or if things are getting a little bit rocky, then I'll go through and we'll, we'll do some actual teaching. So I like to have the teacher's guide there and available. I don't only want to buy the textbook and workbook. Um, but there's a little bit of a hack. So if you buy the teacher's guide, you don't need to buy this textbook. You can skip it if you want. Um, so I really appreciate that. But I really like how, um, I wanna find like a, what I was talking about with like the comic book feel. Cause they have these, well they have little people, but oftentimes their little people have like thought boxes like this. So they have thought boxes of how they would solve um, problems and I remember especially in the grade 3 book when they were teaching kids like four different ways how to solve one problem They would have the problem and then they have these four different 
kids in the book thinking about how to solve that problem in four different ways. And my kid loves comic books, and I just really thought that that was attractive for him. Um, so that is basically why we switched to dimensions, Singapore dimensions math. So know that it's known as a more challenging math. It might take a little bit to get used to, um, but if you need, if you have a child who might need to be challenged a little bit more with math, this is uh, this has been a really good experience for us. Now he's going in. My oldest is going into grade six, so he's got the less childish looking. He's, it's the middle school math, and it's not as fun looking anymore. I mean, it's it's actually pretty good inside. Let's see the textbook pages. So there's still like, you know, some color in them and that kind of thing, but they're not quite as as childish. Oh look, there's still some comic-y stuff in there. He's gonna like that. Oh yeah, see, look at that. So I love that. Um, and then the the um, workbook is still just the black and, oh, maybe it's not black and white. This actually has blue in it. There you go, blue, black and white for middle school. So I'm looking forward to starting uh, this book of dimensions math with him as we enter into a grade six level. So that's kind of a flip through. Um, and a chit chat about math. Um, so yeah, I think I will wrap this video up and I'll throw her on YouTube so you can see what we're up to and where our thoughts are at. Our thoughts aren't quite on school just yet. We are really soaking in a summer break. I think I had mentioned before, um, last summer was the first summer in three years that we had taken a school break and it just felt really good to have a rest. We felt like we needed that again this year. Um, I will not say never that we won't homeschool year round again because I really like that as well but it's been nice just to kick back a little bit. And so I think we won't probably restart school until traditional September. Um, but we are of course learning through life, life schooling a little bit and having a good time with that. So yes, after our holidays and camping and stuff like that winds up, I will try to show my face on here again and get excited with the start, of, to, with kicking off the new school year with you guys. Um, so, oh, you know what, the other thing I should mention, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Anyways, I'm gonna mention it now. The summer, am I allowed to say this? The Summer Olympics are on, on I think the 26th, what is it now? So in six days, uh, the games start in Paris, which is really great. I don't feel, we're not a sporty family, but I really like the Olympics and I have great family memories of watching them. And so I have a resource that I'd like to share. I made it for the Winter Olympics. Um, and so I've just kind of converted it to the summer ones. And actually I have it, I will show it to you guys. And they're just basically watch sheets to help my kids um, get inspired, uh, get to know the sports and how many events are in each sport. There's like, there's 30 some sports, but then there's so many different events within that. There's over 300 medals that they're gonna be doing um, to give away. And uh, it, I think it's really fun uh, learning the flags of the world. So I, I have to cover this up because I had to change the name. I found out that there is, there's copyright issues with saying a lot of terms during this time of year. Uh, I'm not even supposed to be saying the word summer. So because I don't wanna get into any trouble, because this is a freebie and I'm making no money on it and I'm not looking for self-promotion, but I'm trying to get my kids into the games, um, I'll share it with you guys and just let you know what's inside. So I've given you guys uh, just a QR code to look up the flags of the world if you want, a uh, list of athletes participating. Um, I did find a website with free coloring pages, so I gave you guys a QR code for that as well and the schedule. Um, and then I have bingo cards with all the sports here. So it might get you guys watching sports that you normally wouldn't or maybe you didn't realize were part of the Olympics. There's even like break dancing this year, which is a little mind blowing, blowing to me. Um, but maybe you guys could try to get a bingo. So I thought that would be really fun. And then the watch sheets, they're pretty simple. They all look like this. I have to cover this up. I had to change those words. There, it just says sports, I think here now. <laughs> um, but basically you have the sport, you put the date, uh, you can, your kids can check off which event they're watching, um, the flag for who they're cheering for, and then the placing. So we have uh, all the medals down here and you can color the flags of the world with the placing. There's a place to list your favorite athletes or any epic moments. And I have a page for every single sport in the sports that are going to be on TV <laughs> so that you guys can check them out and and just follow along and cheer and watch and make 
make a bit of a uh, make memories while you watch this year. Um, there's also an additional placement tracker. If you want to print that off in the back, um, you can hang it up and maybe if you're watching a whole bunch of sports, you can have the, there's a place to list the, the sport and the event and then the flags that you color as well as I have a little poster in the back for you too. So enjoy that. That's a freebie. I will put it below and have a really great summer and we will talk to you guys when school starts in the fall. Have a really great uh, rest of your month.